Hi friends, welcome back to another video. So today I will be explaining physics, May June 2014, paper 61. Question 1 states the ICCSC class is investigating the motion of a mass hanging on a spring. Figure 1.1 shows the apparatus. So this is the apparatus in figure 1.1. Part A states on figure 1.1 measure the length L0 of the unstretched spring in millimeters. So we will measure the length from here till here in centimeter and then multiply it by 10. And so the answer will be 20 millimeter. Then part B states the diagram is shown is drawn one tenth of actual size. Write down the actual length L0 of the unstretched spring in millimeters. So this is drawn on one tenth of the actual size. So we will write 20 multiply by 10 which will be 200 millimeters so we will write 200 millimeter 200 over here a student hangs 300 gram mass on the spring and measure the new length l of the spring to calculate the extension e of the spring using the equation e is equal to l minus l0 so the new equation is new length is 255 minus the original length which is 200 which is calculated in part b so which will be 55 millimeter we will write the extension e as 55 then part 2 states calculate a value for the spring constant k using the equation k is equal to force divided by e where f is 3 newtons include the appropriate unit so k is equal to f divided by e in over here we have the force which is 3 newtons and the e which is 55 so we write 3 divided by 55 which will be 0 0.055 so we write k as 0 0.055 part c states a student adjusts the position of lower clamp so that the pin is level with the bottom of the mass when the mass is not moving she pulls the mass down a short distance and releases it so that it oscillates up and down Figure 1.2 shows one complete oscillation, the highest position of the mass and this is the lowest position of the mass and here there is one complete oscillation. She measures the time t taken for 20 complete oscillations. So the time is 26.84 seconds. Calculate the time t taken for one complete oscillation. So which will be 26.84 divided by 20 which will be 1.342 seconds. So this is the total the time taken for one complete oscillation because over here the she measured the time for 20 complete oscillation. So we had to cal calculate the time for one complete oscillation and that is 1.342 seconds. That part D states she replaces the 300 gram mass with a 500 gram mass. She repeats the timing as described in part C. So this is 34.48 seconds. Calculate the time taken for one complete oscillation. So 34.48 divided by 20 which will be 1.724 seconds. So the time taken will be 1.724 seconds. Then part D, part 2 states. The student suggests that the time taken for the oscillation of the spring should not be affected by the change in mass. State whether her results support this suggestion and justify your answer by reference to the results. Statement is no justification. The difference is too large. The results are not in limits of the experimental accuracy. So this is the reason her results doesn't support the suggest suggestion. So this is what we will write in part 2 of question D. Question E states explain in briefly how you avoid a, a line of sight error when measuring the length of a spring in this type of experiment. You draw may draw this a diagram. So over here we will draw a diagram and write two types of explanation briefly to avoid a line of parallax error or sight error. So the first one is rule touching or very close to the spring. And second is perpendicular viewing of the spring or the scale. You must you must look at a ruler or measure the length, read the length at perpendicular line, not from here. 
or from here. You must view it from right at 90 degree angle, which is like this. So this will reduce the parallax error. And second is the rule touching or very close to the spring. So you must keep it very close to the spring to measure the length and this will reduce the parallax error. Question 2 states, a student carries out an experiment to compare how quickly thermal energy is conducted along rods made from different metals. Each rod is heated at one end with a Bunsen burner flame. Each rod carries a marker held on the rod with a little wax. When the wax melts, the marker falls. Part A states, one other piece of equipment is required to compare how quickly the thermal energy is conducted. Name the piece of equipment. So that will be the stopwatch. Part B states suggest three possible variables that the student should keep constant in order to make the fair comparison between the different metals. First one will be the length of the rod. Second is the am amount of wax. And third is the mass of the marker. Then part C states another student suggests that it would be helpful to measure the temperature at both ends of the rod. He suggests using a liquid in glass thermometer normally used for, for measuring the temperature of the hot water. So just two reasons why a liquid in glass thermometer is not suitable. First is thermometer can't make a proper contact with the rod and second is it has a small range. So these are the two reasons why liquid in glass thermometer is not suitable. The IPCC class is investigating the cooling of a thermometer bulb under different conditions. A student places a thermometer in a pass beaker of hot water as shown in figure 3.1. So here we have the thermometer in water and in figure 3.2 we have a thermometer. Then part A states write down the temperature costa H of the hot water as shown in the thermometer in figure 3.2. So costa H we will measure the length of measure the temperature of the shown at the thermometer which is 92 degrees celsius and we write 92 degrees celsius at qh or costa h then part b states a student removes the thermometer from the beaker of water he immediately starts a stop clock he records the patient costa every 30 seconds the readings are shown in table 3.1 then over here he replaces the thermometer in the beaker of hot water and records the temperature. He removes the thermometer from the beaker of hot water and places it in a beaker containing only dry cotton wool. The temperature, the thermometer bulb is completely surrounded by cotton wool. He immediately starts a cl stop clock and records temperature cost every 30 seconds. The readings are shown in table 3.1. Part 1 states complete the column headings in the table. So over here first time is usually measured in seconds. Then costa which is a change in temperature is always measured in degrees Celsius. And in width insulation the cost is also measured in degrees Celsius. So first is seconds, second is degrees Celsius, third is degrees Celsius. Then, part 2 states, state whether the cotton wool insulation increases, decreases or has no significant effect on the rate of cooling of thermometer bulb compared, compared with the rate of cooling with no insulation. Justify your answer by reference to the results. So the statement is, it decreases. Justification is thermometer insulated with wool is 2 degrees Celsius less than thermometer without wool. Then. First, uh, part C states suggest two calculations that should be kept constant when this experiment is repeated. First is room temperature, and second is the starting temperature of thermometer, and third is amount of cotton wool. The, the, we, I have written over here three types, three conditions. You can choose any of these two. So first is room temperature. Second is starting temperature of thermometer and third is amount of cotton wool. Question 4 states the ICCC class is investigating the resistance of a lamp filament. The circuit is shown on figure 4.1. Part A states 
A student connects the sliding contact S to point X in the circuit. She measures the potential difference V across the lamp and the current I in the circuit. The meters are shown in figure 4.2. So here's the voltmeter reading and here we have the current reading or amps reading. Then part 1 states write down the reading shown on the meter in figure 4.2. So V is 1.9 because it is less than 2 and more than 1.8 so it is between 1.8 and 1 and 2 so it will be 1.9 then ammeter reading is from 0 0.2 it's between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 so it is at 0 0.25 amps or 0 0.26 so you write 0 0.26 or you can write 0 0.25 amps then part 2 states calculate the resistance R of the lamp filament using the equation R is equal to V divided by I. So R is equal to V divided by I is 1.9 divided by 0 0.26 and that is 7.31 ohms. So the resistance of the lamp filament is 7.31 ohms. Question B states the student repeats the steps in A with the sliding contact S to add point Y and then add point Z. Comment the effect, if any, on the brightness of the lamp that you would expect to see when the sliding contact is moved from X to Y to Z. The brightness increases from X to Z because if if the slider S is situated at X, it has to move through a highly resistant wire from X till Z. And when the S is at Z, it doesn't have to travel through the resistance wire and it will directly pass through the circuit. So the lamp will be brighter. So that's why the brightness increases from X to Z. Then part C states the student moves the starting contact S back to point X. Suggest one practical reason why the new meter reading might be slightly different from those in figure 4.2. First is the resistance of the lamp has changed and the second is wire or lamp is getting hot. So that's why the meter readings will be different from those in figure 4.2. Then question D states. And if the student carries out an experiment using a different lamp, he takes readings using various lengths of resistance wire in the circuit. He plots a graph of V of volts against I amps. Figure 4.3 is a sketch of the graph. State whether the current graph shows that the resistance increases, decreases, or remains constant. As the current increases, justify your conclusion by reference to the graph. The resistance increases and the justification is voltage increases more quickly than current. So this will be the final answer for question D. Question 5 states the ITCC class is investigating reflection using the plane mirror. Figure 5.1 shows a student's ray trace sheet with a line MR drawn on it. In the experiment, the reflecting face of a mirror is placed vertically on the line MR. The additional dashed line shows a second mirror position. So this is the figure of figure 5.1. Part A states and L is a normal line. Normal to line MR draw a line 8 cm long from B at an angle of incidence I is equal to 30 degrees to the normal below MR and to the left of the normal label the end of this line A. So we have to draw a line of 8 cm at an incidence of 30 degrees so we will measure 30 degrees over here and draw a straight line of 8 cm till point A and mark the end of this line as point A and we will mark here as the point where the reflection is made then part B states the strain plasma places two pins P1 and P2 on the line AB, a suitable distance apart from this ray tracing experiment. He views that he views the images of pins P1 and P2 in the mirror and places two pins P3 and P4 so that pins P3 and P4 
and images of P2 and P1 all appear exactly one behind the other. The positions of P3 and P4 are shown in figure 5.1. Part 1 states draw the line joining the position of P3 and P4 extend the line until it meets an L. So over here we will connect P4 and P3 together and extend the line towards point P until it meets the line NL. Then part 2 states measure the angle A0 between NL and the line joining the positions of P3 and P4. At this stage the angle costa between the mirror and the line MR is 0 degrees. So we will measure the angle over here R or A0 which will be 30 degrees. So we will write A0 is equal to 30 degrees. Then part, B, part C states the student draws lines at angles coaster 10 degrees, 20 degrees and 30 degrees and 40 degrees to MR. The first line at 10 degrees to MR is shown in figure 5.1. He repeats the procedure described in part B. Placing the mirror on each of the new lines in turn, the readings are shown in table 5.1. So, coaster 0 10 degree is 51 degrees at A, 21 is 69, 30 is 90, and 40 is 111, and 50 is 130. So, we will use these values and plot a straight line over here with 40 on the starting of the x-axis and then 60, 80, 100, 120 and 140. Then over here in y-axis you write 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 as coaster degrees. Then part D states determine the gradient of the graph. Show clearly on the graph how you obtain the necessary information. So g is equal to y2 y2 minus y1 divided by y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So we have brought, used the two points which is the one is the highest point over here at 50 and 1, 50 and 130 and this lowest point which is at 10 and 51. Then we will use these both points and Calculate the gradient which is 1.975 as the final answer for question B. Question E states in this experiment when the mirror is moved through an angle costa the reflected rays move through an angle A minus A0. So complete the table 5.2. So in the previous in the previous question over here we have calculated the value of a0, a0 which is 30 degrees so we will use that value to calculate the a minus a0 so a is 51 minus a0 which is 30 which will be 21 then 69 minus 20, 30 which will be 39 then 90 minus 30 will be 60 then 100, 111 minus 30 will be 81 and then 130 minus 30 will be 100 then part 2 states suggest the relationship between A minus A0 and Costa. You may express the relationship in words or as an equation. So A minus A0 is almost double the Costa. So we will write this as the final answer for part 2. Then question four F states state one precaution to improve the accuracy which you would take in this experiment. So the first one will be large pin separation, second will be view from basis of the pins, third is use thin pins and fourth is draw, draw thin lines. So here I have written four types of precaution but you have to write only one type of precaution so you can choose one from these four. So these are the four final answers for part F.